Games with multiple endings often include a bad ending to make you feel bad about doing badly at the game. Usually these endings are pretty easy to spot. Yes, thank you, Rise of the Triad. Sometimes though, when you finish a game, you might not even realise that you're looking at what the game considers to be the bad ending, because what is happening on screen is undoubtedly cooler than whatever sunshine and rainbows nonsense the developers decided was the canonical conclusion. Here then are seven so-called bad endings that were undeniably cooler than their goody two-shoes counterparts. Enjoy, and beware spoilers for the following games. In Streets of Rage, the sinister crime lord Mr X and his organisation, The Syndicate, have taken over the city, which is bad news if you wanted to visit the Pine Pot Breakfast Diner because there are punks in front of it now. You play as one of a group of ex-cops who for some reason still have access to police bazooka cars, who have to fight their way through these streets of rage to the syndicate's headquarters, taking on Mr X's various S&M enthusiasts, jugglers and pro wrestlers. It'd be a lot harder without the bazooka car, if I'm honest. Anyway, when you finally make it to Mr X's office in a skyscraper high above the city, he is impressed by your ability to bazooka car all his henchmen to death and offers you a deal. Join his criminal organisation and rule at his right hand. If you're playing the game single player, this is a trick and accepting it dumps you back to the start of the level. Rejecting the offer, of course, leads to a final showdown, after which you get the game's good ending, in which not a lot happens, to be honest. You mope around the office for a bit, get a little wave and bro grabs from the bazooka car driver, the hardest working man in video games, and then go and look at the city for what must be, judging by it going from early evening to the dead of night, about eight hours. If you're playing Streets of Rage with a friend, however, there is another ending you can get where Mr X asks you both to join the organisation. If your friend says no, but you decide that actually that sounds like a good career move for you right now and say yes, you end up fighting each other to the death. Drunk with power at this point, you can then tell Mr X to go shove it as well and fight him to the death, at which point you get this inarguably much cooler ending in which your character is now the head of the syndicate and gets their own sweet throne to sit on while looking sinister. Also, the game tells you you're great, which it absolutely doesn't do in the supposedly good ending. Bad end? I beg to differ, Streets of Rage. Look how much fun Axel is having. You have defeated me. My pleasure belongs to you. In Rayman 2 The Great Escape, gaming's 90sest haircut, Rayman must find four masks that he can use to awaken an ancient spirit that will defeat a bunch of robot pirates and save the world. Also, maybe we'll finally figure out how his hands and feet stay attached when he doesn't have arms and legs. The eternal mystery. You know, Globox, I think this might be the end. If all that sounds like a bit too much hard work, however, there is a shortcut ending you can take about a quarter of the way through the game while trying to retrieve the elixir of life in the Cave of Bad Dreams. Your point ends here! The guardian of the Cave of Bad Dreams is Jano, who is a kind of Mardi Gras Mike Wazowski, and once you defeat him, he offers you all the riches in his treasure cave, a hoard of gold that would have Scrooge McDuck himself struggling into an old-timey bathing suit the second he laid eyes on it. Incredible! Cool! 
what you're supposed to do is virtuously decline the riches, at which point you'll be awarded the elixir of life, and you can get on with the dangerous, stressful, world-threatening business of the rest of the game. You made the right decision. You deserve this. Here! This is the elixir of life. Guard it preciously. Or, and hear me out, instead you can take the treasure and just f*** off to a tropical island somewhere where you can laze under a palm tree, grow fat and happy, and just sleep all day. I want the treasure! How is this the bad ending? Why don't you want nice things for Rayman, Ubisoft? Is it because the lack of arms and legs freaks you out too? Because that's fair. What's the insertion method? We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. And then? We'll launch a one-man SDV. After the SDV gets as close as it can, dispose of it. From there on, you'll have to swim. Back in the first Metal Gear Solid game on PlayStation 1, Solid Snake was a character whose backstory hadn't been fully fleshed out. He was a mystery wrapped in an enigma, very literally wrapped in an extremely figure-hugging sneaking suit. Uh, hope he brought along some talc to get out of that thing. It's not until Metal Gear Solid's ending that we get some real insight into the character of Solid Snake, as he opens up to flame-haired potential love interest Meryl Silverberg. What do your genes say about your future now? Maybe it's time I live for someone else. Someone else? Yeah. Someone like you. Someone like you? I get it, Snake. Keeping your options open, you sly dog. This good ending wraps up with Snake and Meryl riding off into the sunset on a snowmobile in an extremely heartwarming fashion. But you should know that getting this canon ending does rob you of experiencing one of gaming's greatest bromances. Yes, better even than the boys from Final Fantasy XV. So, what you doing? Nothing much. Just chilling. Hard to believe, I know. The problem is, this amazing alternative ending where Snake escapes the facility with his nerdy buddy Otacon instead is technically the bad ending, because of the minor technicality that, for it to activate, Meryl has to technically, well, die. A serious bummer. Technically. Yes, this is a tragic and heartbreaking moment, but crucially, Hal Otacon Emmerich is right there by Snake's side at this low moment to offer some compassionate words to lift our hero from his pit of despair. Snake. People die. Okay. Well, look, plenty of time to work on the compassionate words thing once we're out of this exploding facility. This ending mirrors the good ending, only this time it's Otacon clambering onto the back of the snowmobile, and instead of a load of introspection on the sacrifices of a soldier, we get a bunch of goofy, nerdy jokes about 2001 A Space Odyssey. Where to, Snake? Uh, my real name is David, Otacon. I'm Hal, Dave. Oh, that's right. Hal. Hal and Dave. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should take a trip to Jupiter. References to movies in a Hideo Kojima game. Now I've seen everything. Otacon and Snake's awkward banter is endlessly more entertaining than the po-faced stuff in the original ending. Plus, you get to experience the profound weirdness of the two of them laughing together while sitting astride an unmoving snowmobile. I'm not gonna hide anymore. And besides, even if you do follow the canonical ending, by the next game, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, it's clear Meryl and Snake never work out as a couple, and Snake goes on to form the non-governmental organisation called Philanthropy with, you guessed it, Otacon. He's the voice in your ear as you tackle MGS2's first mission on a massive ship. The better friends you are, the more openly you can disagree with each other. So feel free to present a counterpoint if you don't agree with what I'm saying. Argue away. Sure, all right. Not the only massive ship going on here. Just saying. Our deaths will only rally others. Your very public and painful executions will serve as an example to the rest of the galaxy. There may be a rebellion yet. It's possible you don't remember the ending to Star Wars The Force Unleashed because you were too busy messing with stormtroopers to actually get around to finishing it. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, you see? Easily done. 
If you do need a refresher, the canon good ending of The Force Unleashed involves your character, secret Darth Vader apprentice Starkiller, getting zapped to death with explosive force lightning by Emperor Palpatine himself. <laughs> Obviously this is all very important story-wise, because in death, Starkiller becomes a martyr for the newly formed Rebel Alliance, inspiring them in their battle against the evil Empire, etc etc. Also, it explains why he never shows up in any of the actual Star Wars movies, where you'd think it would come in handy having someone around who can do this. Clearly, however, the much cooler ending is the one in which, instead of sparing Vader and attacking the Emperor, you finish Vader off and attempt to do the same to Palpy. You have doomed yourself and your friends! It doesn't go quite according to plan, and also beloved character actor Jimmy Smits is dead for some reason, but after the Emperor throws a spaceship at you, you get rebuilt as an undeniably badass cyborg Sith assassin with claws for hands. You could have been my successor, my equal, but no. Given that we have two options here, it's pretty clear which one the game thought was cooler, considering that shortly after release we were treated to some exceptionally non-canon evil robot Starkiller DLC, in which you do a series of incredibly badass things like blowing up Boba Fett with one of his own rockets, <laughs> throwing Obi-Wan Kenobi into the Millennium Falcon's engine, and totally wrecking Luke Skywalker in a series of lightsaber duels involving throwing him into a passing ship, cutting off his hand, and turning him to the dark side and making him your apprentice. Very good. My apprentice. But no, I'm sure being dead is cool too. Good ending. Quite the choice, let me tell you. Ah, it's damn good to be back. I can't wait to break in my new body. Me? Oh, just the most hardcore ass kicker to ever walk the planet is all. Soul Nomad and the World Eaters might sound like this year's Finland Eurovision entry, but it's actually a strategy RPG for the PS2. You play as a character who, for complicated JRPG reasons, has to share their body with the soul of Gig, who is a demigod also known as the Master of Death. As you can imagine with a title like that, he's not exactly a great roommate. What? You still don't get it? I'm taking over your body, stupid! At the start of the game, Gig asks to take over your body, and you can either say no, setting you on the good path through the game, or yes, setting you on what the game calls the demon path. Despite being called the demon path, this game route still has a good ending whereby the good guys prevail, and Gig is freed from his brainwashing and returns to his old good self. No, I remember it all. My soul was already cleansed once. Oh god, what have I done? He is still stuck with the memories of his past wrongdoings though, like if Bucky Barnes had been living in a sword for 200 years instead of killing people with his metal arm. And I remember everything I saw, everything I did, as Gig. Every last sin. That wasn't your fault. You weren't in control. Which, you know, is fine. What it pales in comparison to, however, is the bad ending of The Demon Path, in which your character goes mad with power and literally eats Gig. Why? How can you... <laughs> Give that man a voice acting BAFTA. You are then confronted by the two demigods who protect the world, who are here to congratulate you on your new power but ask if you wouldn't mind toning it down a bit on account of, you know, the people eating. You have to stop this senseless destruction. To which you respond by destroying the world, and then you comment about how much fun it was. Is this what you wanted? Which seems like a reasonable reaction, if you ask me. Much cooler. Also, all I'm saying is, keep an eye out for this in Season 2 of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Despite its old-timey cartoony appearance, Cuphead is, at its heart, a punishingly difficult bullet hell shooter. 
It's so hard, in fact, that you might have trouble seeing any ending because you keep getting killed by a rat who lives in a soup can. <laughs> to be fair, I feel like he wants it more. If you do eventually make it to the end of the game, however, you come face to face with the devil himself, who is, it has to be said, super impressed by how Cuphead and Mugman manage to collect all those soul contracts from the game's various bosses. As such, he offers you a deal. Hand over the soul contracts and join him hanging out in hell, or don't do that, I guess, is the other option. Still, I mean, the game is literally called Cuphead Don't Deal With The Devil, so it's pretty clear what the game wants you to do here. And if you do turn down the devil's generous offer, you're thrown into a wicked hard boss fight that really puts the hell in bullet hell. Outblast this onslaught and you're presented with the game's good ending, a twee storybook roundup where Cuphead and Mugman burn the soul contracts, free everyone, and then are carried aloft in celebration despite being objectively horrifying nightmare monsters with cups for heads. <laughs> Much better if you ask me is the bad ending where you accept the devil's offer. In this ending, we get a fully animated look at Cuphead and Mugman's awesome new demonic forms with chewed straws, broken handles, new colour schemes, and some pretty extreme dental work. <laughs> We're also treated to a spooky downbeat piano theme over the credits, which rules. And you get a creepy backwards version of the title screen song. <laughs> And, most importantly of all, we get to skip the entire devil boss fight. Wish I'd known this was an option earlier, to be honest, I'd have joined the devil around about the time of that fight with a giant bee. Save myself the hassle. <laughs> Wacky platform game Earthworm Jim came out in 1994, a time when most game endings were a screen of text hastily written during a designer's lunch break. So it wasn't all that unusual that Earthworm Jim's original good ending was pretty underwhelming. After defeating the game's final boss, Queen Slug for a butt, you're presented with a misspelled screen telling you you're the best, and then Jim finally reaches the kidnapped Princess What's-Her-Name, who is immediately crushed by a cow. Jim then slinks off as the credits roll, despite the princess clearly still being alive under the cow. Jim! Dude! She's still blinking! Aren't you going to go back and help? Alright, never mind. For the game's special edition, however, released a year after for the PC and Sega CD, the developers knew that they could harness the awesome power of CDs and their vast 700 megabytes of storage to create some new endings. Which they did, creating a new bad ending that would play if you finished the game on the easiest difficulty setting, Practice Mode. In this new ending, one of the development team grabs the mic to firstly give you a hard time about playing on easy. What a worm. Playing on practice, eh? Well, you'd better step up the difficulty setting if you want to see the real ending. In the meantime, though... Before taking a hard left into a lecture about worms, which starts off serious... Worms are so different from one another that zoologists do not classify them together in a single group. And gradually becomes more and more ridiculous with bizarre ad-libs. What do they look like? All worms look just like elephants, with two ears and a long tail. Most of them have complex uh, hair patterns. Evolutionary conspiracy theories. The segmented worms consist of about 9,000 species of free living and parasitic forms that show certain evolutionary advancements over other, oh, sure, evolutionary. Now we're all just pro-evolution and singing. Ba 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 Still beats watching someone get a cow dropped on their head. My baby wanted me to read this. Ba 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 but it was going too fast. Ba 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 ba. My baby wanted me to read this. 
Congratulations, you've made it to the end of this video and subsequently unlocked the secret so-called bad ending that is actually much, much better because you get to run off and shirk all your responsibilities and not do anything for the rest of the day except for watching more YouTube videos by Outside Xbox. And to facilitate this excellent epilogue for you, there is a playlist somewhere on screen right now where you can go find those videos. Thank you so much for watching this one and we'll see you soon on Outside Xbox where there's a video like this one every single Thursday. Click the bell notification button and you'll know every time there's a new one. There you go.